that won't come true Or is it really you? Are you just an angel I sing to? Or is it really you? How can a dream be so splendid? I wish were true Or is it really you? Thank you, Miss Merrick. That was beautiful. And now, Lindsay, may I have just a moment to say goodbye to my unseen friends who have been so kind to me. Yes, Jane, on one condition, that you promise them that you'll come back to us soon. <laughs> it's awfully hard to leave so many friends, even for a short time. But I do hope to be back with you soon, so I won't say goodbye. Just off Vida Zane, and God bless you all. The same to you, Jane, and come back to us soon. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to the one and only Jane Merrick, who has sung her way into the hearts of thousands. I know you'd like to join me in wishing her the best vacation ever. This program comes to you every day at this time through the courtesy of Consolidated Dairies, whose unexcelled products should be on every table every day. And now we present another episode in that domestic drama, The Trouble of the Tipples. Penny for your thoughts. I'd gladly sell them. They're not very happy ones. <laughs> Neither are mine. But I can't help it. I must get away from everything. Why, Jane, I believe you're frightened. Yes, Jim, terribly frightened. It isn't like you to run away from things. What are you afraid of, dear? Whatever it is. Can't we face it together? Marry me and... Oh, if I only could. Jim, no matter what happens, remember I do love you. That's all I can say now. So, goodbye until... Until when? Until I can come to you and say yes. Hello? Speaking? Oh, I thought you had decided to call me. Dangerous? Yes. But isn't your freedom worth the risk? Am 
much money. For a big radio star like you. And uh, remember, I do not accept checks. I understand. I'll bring it to you in cash. Nobody must know anything about it. Goodbye. Remember, Sally, just not in to anyone and everyone that phones or calls. Yes, sir, Miss Jane, I understand. Just not in. That's right, Sally. You can go. Yes, sir. I tell you, Lindsay, consolidated dairies are going to cancel their time if we don't do something. They admit that this new girl is good but that their listeners are not interested. They're all clamoring for Jane Merrick. Even our studio audience has dwindled to nothing. The station is deluged with phone calls and letters. Consolidated as a right to kick. And that's an account we can't afford to lose. If I could only tell them when she's coming back, we might be able to hold them. Haven't you any idea? You know as much as I do. That maid of Jane's won't tell me a thing. I've called her so often now, she won't answer the phone anymore. I'm going to try something else. Wish me luck. Hello, Sally. Now, see here. You've got to help me get in touch with Miss Mary. She just stays in, Mr. Wallace. That's all I know. But it means a lot of money to her. Maybe her future. Surely you must know where to get a message to her. I just remembered, Mr. Wallace. Now, uh, think hard, Sally. Maybe you can remember if... Uh... <clears throat> Something very strange about the whole affair. She might even be in danger. I want to help and protect her. But it's a delicate situation. Yes, yes, I understand. She might even resent being watched, huh? But you can depend upon us, Mr. Wallace. You may be sure that we will not put a local operative on the case. She might be recognized. Ah, let me see. By George, I have the right one for the job. Works out of our New York office. Very expensive, but very efficient. Well, the expense doesn't matter. Okay, I'll put through a call. What? Long distance. Two 
427, car 427, go to Carlton Apartments, 2314 Parkview, a prowler, Carlton Apartments, a prowler. Come on, now, there he goes. Step on it. Do you need any help? I suppose you lost your key and don't want to wake your mother, huh? Why, my officer, how did you know? Oh, sure, it's a gift. Hey, listen, sister, I know all the answers. And you better be thinking up a couple because you're going to need them where you're going, down at the night court. Pietro Mazzetti? Yes, senor. You're charged with peddling without a license. Are you guilty or not guilty? I know the bishop of your name. Explain the charge to me. La justicia dice que está en la calle sin licencia ninguna. Oh, no, you want to give over them with the license. You know, probably the license don't know anything. They don't touch it. Why am I brought up here? Don't touch it. Probably why am I brought up here? He says guilty. Ten dollars or five days. Get, get dollars. Oh, no, you must be cinco giorni. That's all. Cinco giorni, my boss. Sure. More publicity in a jury trial. That's his angle. Look off till I do a little sleuthing. I got a hunch it's a gag. Say, so speaking of gags, are you in the doghouse with the judge? The big bad wolf is wise. 
that you gave him a bum steer on that drunk he let off last night. The guy you told him was Mishner's nephew. I had to do something. I couldn't let him lock up my bootlegger. Well, take a tip from me. Lay off him tonight. He's gunning for you. I got a hunch he's a bum shot. But suspends the scent. Now you may go home with your wife, but see that you behave. Big pardon, Your Honor. But I'd feel better if I could serve the time. I deserve it. <laughs> Quiet! This is not a show, nor is it a nightclub for your entertainment. Nick, I'll have order here or I'll clear the court. You've got a hunch he's not in a very good humor. Well, don't you try and cheer him up. Okay. Bring in the ladies. Very well. Come ahead, girl. Julia Griffith. You're charged with reckless driving in a congested zone. Guilty or not guilty? I was only going 30, Your Honor. Had you been drinking? Sir, I never drink. Ten dollars or ten days? Ten days? But, Judge, I haven't the time. I'll pay the ten dollars. Pay the clerk. the old dame got a snoop for. No, you are romantic half-wit. The one at the other end. What a girl. Mary Stevens. Your name is Mary Stevens. You were charged with solicity. Are you guilty or not guilty? I'm guilty. Is this your first offense? Oh, yes, Judge. But does my husband have to know? He's very sick, and if he found out, he'd... Oh, he's getting so weak. Oh, and I was desperate. <laughs> Case dismissed. See that this gets the immediate attention of the welfare board. <laughs> Maisie Johnson. Your name is Maisie Johnson. You're charged with soliciting. Are you guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Just how many times have you been arrested on this charge? I forget, Your Honor. Ninety days. Maybe you'll be able to remember that. Barbara Hammond. Your name is Barbara Hammond? You were discovered on the fire escape of the Carlton Apartments in the act of trying to open a window. Now, just what were you doing there? Barbara, will you never learn? I beg your pardon, Your Honor, but I was so taken by surprise. You see, this young woman's my fiancée. Your Honor, Barbara has one very bad habit. And Judge, I tried so hard to cure her. She's a confirmed practical joker. Tonight, I'm afraid she's been up to old tricks. You see, I live at the cop. Now, a good reprimand from you may cure the one thing that stands in the way of our happiness. 
you will help, won't you? Yes. Young woman, I've just learned that you indulge in the vicious practice of playing practical jokes. That it has been the cause of much mental anguish to this young man to whom you are engaged. Who is obviously a very sensitive, high-minded young man. Who deserves something. Practical jokes usually get somebody into trouble. Sometimes they result in tragedy. Therefore, it is the desire of this court to protect you from your own tendencies by placing you in the custody of your husband. Oh, but, Your Honor, I, I, I haven't any husband. A mere detail, which the court will take care of now. <laughs> now, if you please, you two young people... Send for the county clerk. I can save a lot of time by asking you a few questions. I must know your ages, your occupations. I guess I'm not the only one who plays practical jokes. Gee, Bob, Miss Hammond, I'm terribly sorry. Do you want me? Well, I, I, I'm sorry your gesture to help me got you into this. And I can't even give you the explanation that I owe you right now. Will you trust me for a few days, and then, then I'll explain everything. And then, of course, you can, you can have the judge's little joke and no. And no? But I'm just beginning to like married life. You're being swell about this. You know something? You're the nicest husband I've ever had. Thanks a lot, Jerry Beale. I wish there was something I could do to show my gratitude. There is. Have supper with him. Anybody'd agree that a wedding supper's in order. Well, I would like to, but I can't tonight, really. Hey, I, I will have dinner with you on Thursday, if you like. If I like. Okay. I'll meet you here at 7. Taxi. Well, goodbye until Thursday. Right. The courthouse steps at 7. Hey, Jim, what's the lowdown on this Jane Merrick business? If she's pulling a fast one on the station after all you've done for oh, her... No, Jerry. Not Jane. She'd never do things that way. She must have a good reason for laying off. I've got a hunch you like her. A lot. I do, Jerry. I'm worried. There's something strange about the whole thing. And I don't know the answer. Yet. But let's forget personalities. The station's in a spot. Why, Consolidated Dairies would walk out tomorrow if they knew Jane wasn't coming back. What a story. Famous radio star walks out on station at Mater. Oh, boy, here's where yours truly gets a raise. Oh, not a chance, Jerry. I'm going to ask all you news hounds to lay off Jane. What is the scoop? Big headlines, my chance. Oh, what's the scoop between friends? Okay, old top. I've got to hunt you win. Of course, I don't mind losing the race. But I do hate to throw the paper down. Swell guy. Gee, i got to bust along. Got a heavy date. Be seeing you. 
Better change your mind. It's not often a man wants to buy wine for his own wife. Jerry, for shame. Wine. And when the children need new shoes. What? Again? And the ink not dry on a marriage license? <laughs> oh, please. Just one bottle. I feel like celebrating tonight. Seriously, I don't dare tonight. I have to keep the few wits working. Which reminds me of things not so pleasant as this. Let's dance. You are nice, Jerry. You haven't asked me a single question tonight. Maybe I like guessing games. But don't forget, I'm allowed three questions, and you have to answer. How, where, and when am I going to see you again? Oh, soon, Jerry. Very soon, I hope. Good night. You know, there isn't anything I wouldn't do to help. I do know it, Jerry. That helps. A square deal. <laughs> That's like a man. I suppose you gave me a square deal. If you'd care, you certainly would have tried to help. And why should I? You belong to another woman.
She didn't mean anything to me. I was in a spot. I had to marry her. But that's very easily fixed if you'll just say the word. Dan, I'm all confused. Can't I think this over and let you know tomorrow? Sure, honey. Haven't I waited five years? Uh, by the way, I need a little steak. How are you fixed? I'm not. I haven't any money to give you, Dan. I'll tell you, I need some money right away, or I'll be in a jam again. And why should I? When Radio Star have plenty. Oh, I can't. All right. I'll see what I have. Ah, that girl. How about throwing in some jewelry with the cash? There isn't any here. Not much. That's all I have, then. Well, I guess it will do for the moment. Honey, see you tomorrow. Next door. Henry, go see what happened. That was a shot. Yes. Yeah. Dead. Sit down. But I want to... Sit down. Excuse me, what is it? Oh! Hush, oh. man. Don't hold for the police. I'll keep an eye on this woman. Oh, but please, let me explain. You don't understand. I've got oh, to... Oh, but maybe the police will. What are you doing here, Beale? Believe it or not, Sarge, I was waiting for a police car. Thought you'd never get here. Murder, huh? Yes, my wife and I heard a shot and a scream, and when I came into the room, I found that girl with a gun in her hand. How did it get there? I made her drop it. Nothing's been touched, officer.
Henry C. Benham. Our apartment is next door. Okay, Mr. Benham. You can go back to bed. The chief will want to see you later. Very well. Jane Merrick, put on the spot. And by a dame. Why did you kill her? I got a hunch it was self-defense. You keep out of this. She don't need your help to think of answers. Come on now. Why did you kill her? But gee, Sarge, you don't expect a dame to talk in a spot like this. She's wiser than anything she says can be used against her. Too bad you ain't that wise. Okay, Kelly. Take her along to headquarters. I'll wait for the coroner. Am I going to need the jewelry? Take a chance on her, Kelly. I would. Wise guy. Gee, this is going to be tough on Jim. Jim? Jim who? Why, Jim Wallace, the head of the radio station where she sang. He was pretty keen about her. Why didn't you say so before? Where can I locate him? What's his address? You see, I'd... I'd hope to marry Miss Merrick. Didn't you say, Mr. Wallace, that Miss Merrick had gone away for a vacation? Didn't you know that she'd returned? No, but you see... Sarge, I got a hunch you better postpone this until tomorrow. At headquarters. Jim will be in better shape to help then. Feels right. It's getting late. Drop in and see the chief tomorrow, Mr. Wallace. Yes, of course. Again, interrupting our musical program for more details of the shocking murder of Jane Merrick, famous radio star whose death climaxes the colorful career of one of radio's most popular... All evidence points to the guilt of the unknown young woman found in Miss Merrick's apartment at the time of the crime, and a charge of murder has... What do you know about the girl? Well, she gave the name of Betty Houston. But we discovered she was living in a small family hotel under the name of Beatrice Hale. Do either of those names mean anything to you? Well, she's got plenty of what it takes. The boys have had her in there now on the grill for the last three hours, and she hasn't better an eye. Just refuses to talk. What could have been her motive? I didn't know Miss Merrick had an enemy in the world. She was a wonderful woman, Chief. Now, a little time the coolers loosened tongues before. I'm going to let you have a look at her. You may recognize her. Bring her in. Well, Mr. Wallace? You ever see her before? No, Chief, never. All right, lock her up until the DA is ready for her. But you've got to get a lawyer. I'll get you the best lawyer in town. It wouldn't do any good, Jerry. And it's not going to do you any good to refuse to talk. Oh, gee, Barbara, you must make some move to defend yourself. Perhaps I have no defense, Jerry. Fishing, eh? You'd like to know how much I love you. 
Quit clowning, honey. And tell me something I can do to get you out of this. I've got to see it through alone. I don't want you mixed up in it, Jerry. <laughs> there isn't anything you can do, really. Says you. I warn you, I'm not going to be made a widower without a struggle. I'll either get you out of this mess or get myself in. And I've got a hunch I'll be seeing you. Miss Houston, another visitor. Okay. Yes? You don't know me, but certain parties you do know are anxious to help. May I take them a message? Yes. Just this. Don't make a move. If I need help, they'll get the word. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> Carlton Apartments, police headquarters calling. Give me the manager. This is the manager. Riley. No, nobody's been here today. Thought you were through with the investigation. Riley's going to take a couple of more pictures in Miss Merrick's bedroom. When he comes, let him in the apartment. All right. Oh, yes, Riley. I was telling you to report right back to headquarters when you got through. Thanks, old man. I sit and listen to your beautiful voice and dream of meeting you in person. Lonely rancher. Blurbs and more blurbs. I wonder. Well, can but try. Richmond, 43721? Yeah, Dr. West Beauty Clinic. Sorry, wrong number. This will probably be a lady barber. Is this Alhambra 4200? Yes. Well, who is this? Who do you wish to speak to? Well, uh, uh, say, what place is this and where is it? Why do you want to know? Who are you? Say, what is this, a game? I'm told to call a number and I can't even get a sensible answer. Who you are or where... Supervisor, 
I want the street address, the phone. This is Alhambra, 4200. Yes. What do you mean you can't give that information? Listen, sister, you're talking to the police. Now crack out with that address or there'll be one less supervisor. That's better. Thanks. Who are you and what do you want? Uh, I want to see the doctor. Doctor's busy now. Office hours from 10 to 12 in the morning. But I got to see him. Doctor never admits patients without consultation. 10 to 12 in the morning. Darn funny. Hello. Yes? This is Jim Wallace. Oh, hello, Jerry. What's up? Come out at this time of night? Now, Jerry, after all. What? Jane? What do you mean? Where are you now? I'll get there as fast as my car can make it. But I tell you, I saw her in there, Jim. They've got a body and they're doing something horrible to it. <laughs> they won't let us in there. We've got to get the police. But we've got to be sure, Jerry. Why, it couldn't possibly be Jane. Well, let's have a look anyhow. Come on.
Put up your hand. Heinrich, tie them up. There are a lot of people in this house I wouldn't want to awaken. Gag them. Burglars, huh? I could have shot you both and never been blamed. Consequently, both your lives belong to me. I'll put them to a better use. In the interest of science. I've often wished to make an intimate study of the mental processes of a criminal caught in the commission of a crime. To see his brain at work now. <laughs> Just as I thought. All criminals are cowards. Why, Mr. Wallace! Doctor, what are you all doing to Mr. Wallace? Do you know this man? Sure, I know Mr. Wallace. Well, who is he? Why, well, he's the boss man down at the radio station what Miss Merrick sings at. Uh, Heinrich, un untie them. And how is Miss Merrick now? Oh, she's sleeping like a little child, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. After the murder, I found myself in a terrible dilemma. You see, Miss Merrick has just undergone an operation to remove a birthmark. I was sworn to keep her secret. And yet a murder has been committed. So I had to call the police. The police know? Yes, the maid told them that after Miss Merrick arrived here, her twin sister came to the apartment to hide from someone of whom she was in mortal fear. Pardon me, doctor. Yes? If Miss Merrick is awake now. Uh, wait for a moment. By tomorrow, Miss Merrick will be sufficiently recovered to be told what has happened and also to help the police punish the murderer. Now you may see her for, for just one moment. And remember, no excitement. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Barbara didn't do it. I'll never believe she did it. Steady, my friend. As if a silly birthmark could have mattered. Nothing matters now. I'll never let you get away from me again. Well, I'll raise five. I'll see it. Now I'm calling. I'm going to fall. King's up. Huh? Three seven. Not good enough, boys. Thirty miles old railroad. Well, that's good enough for my money. Oh, hello, Kennedy. Hi, Evans. You boys must have brought me luck. Well, isn't Dapper Dan in the flesh? Funny thing, the chief was just asking about you today. Wondered why you hadn't been down to see him since you got back. How oh, nice. Lonesome for me, eh? Well, well. You know, the straight and narrow doesn't lead to his neighborhood. So, you tell him hello for me. How about paying him a little visit? Now. Now? Yeah. yeah. We got a car outside. We'll take you down. Swell. Why not? You guys uh, 
Come pay me later. Okay. Wish you luck. All right, boys, I'm going to the game. I've got a hunch they've brought you down here to headquarters for another grilling. Are you still going to refuse to talk? Oh, Barbara, I don't understand you. Well, don't try to, Jerry. Look at me, honey. It wouldn't make any difference to me if you had done it. You know that, don't you? But you didn't do it. You don't fool me. But you do know who did it, don't you? Don't ask me any questions, Jerry. I can't answer. Nine months off for good behavior. And the new deal for yours truly from now on. And with a square deck portion. Chief will sure be glad to hear that. What is he anyway? I thought you wanted to see me. I don't remember. I don't remember. Chief will be through pretty quick. He's a cinch to get a confession now. He wants you, Kennedy. Come on in, Dan. While you're waiting. Now let's go back to refresh your memory. For several days prior to the murder, you had kept track of Jane Merrick's every movement. Then, on the night of September the 20th, you entered her apartment from the fire skip and killed her. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the night before, the man you loved, the man who had promised to marry you, told you the truth. But he cared about somebody else. That's not true. That's not true. No. Girl's game. But she's got a break. Then why did you say, I know it's that medic woman. I'll kill her. She shan't take you away from me. Here's a picture I want you to look at. A photograph of the woman you murdered. The inscription will interest you. God bless you, Jim, and keep you always mine. Look at it. Look at it! No! Look at it! No! No! Take it away! Well, looking dame, wasn't she? Yes, well... Now, let's go back to the night of the murder. About 8 o'clock, you phoned Miss Merrick and demanded to see her. And she refused and you threatened her. Then later that night, you went calling by the way of the fire escape, only to find your lover there. So you watched him, heard their tender goodbyes, and waited with murder in your heart until she was alone and helpless. Why didn't you kill him, too? that he would take you back if you put her out of the way. Oh. oh, my eyes. I can't see. Burn it all. Okay, then. We'll play bridge. Where have they got her, Kenny? What are they doing with her? The chief's got no right to. Calm yourself, kid. He's trying to help. I can't stand it any longer. Oh, yes, you can. It didn't bother you much, but it put a hearted defenseless woman. She took your lover away from you, and you hated her. She was begging for mercy, and you shut her down in cold blood. You made it! It's a little irregular, but we got a confession. Well, uh, it's getting late, Chief. I guess he must be all in now. I'll drop around sometime. What's the matter, you birds? Somebody turn off that infernal thing. Let's get some decent light. Oh, by the way, Dan, is the new board at the big house on the level? I've had some... Inf what the... Just a minute, Chief. This switch is jammed.
جون I told you I'd get you. You thought I had forgiven you, eh? But I waited five years to pay you. Five long years in that hell you sent me to. But I got you, you hear me? I got you. And I, I kill you. You. Take him away. Jerry, please try to understand. I understand, Slappy. I may be dumb, but I'm not too dumb to know when I'd be made a sucker. That guy Dan and I ought to team up. He sure can take a lot of punishment. Thanks a lot, Miss Merrick. But I'm afraid this has been an ordeal for you. I'm going to take Miss Merrick right home. Well, I suppose you think I enjoyed hurting you. Oh, Barbara, then why didn't you trust me? What's that got to do with it? You should be mighty proud of her. She followed orders like the good soul as she is. The department owes you a lot, Miss Hammond. Excuse me, Mrs. Beale. You were splendid. You see, by appearing guilty, that gave us time to run down the real murderer. And that little show that forced confession was all her idea. And all the time I thought I was detecting, you were the real thing. Oh, well, I, I still think you're pretty swell, even though you are a bum detective. Well, I can't be ruled out for trying, can I? Oh, no. Not when you're trying for me. I got a hunch you love me. Well, shall I hold a cell with a sudden exposure for the honeymoon? Oh. 